Okay, dudes, welcome back. You're watching Duty's Daggers, and it's review time. We're talking about the Vosteed Mini Nightshade. This is a very recent release, uh, so I wanted to get this out, uh, to get this review out uh, quickly so that uh, you guys can kind of see how it is, get my thoughts on it before you um, think about ordering one if you're interested. Um, I have already done the cut test video with this knife. Um, go watch that if you want to see a uh, cut. Uh, I have a playlist of all my cut tests, and this one will be right in there. And it, spoiler, uh, spoiler alert, it did really, really well. So, But if you want more details, go watch the cut test video. So let's get into it. Please subscribe to the channel. Look down there and make sure you are subscribed. And uh, my Instagram is duties underscore daggers. Uh, if you want to follow me over there, you can. I'm just realizing my ruler is over here. There we go. Okie dokie. So it's a mini. Um, let's pull out the full size right now. There you go. Definitely a mini, but not too many. I can still get a full grip on this knife. Medium sized, well, medium to large sized hands. Um, all right, blade length. Two and five eighths. The actual cutting edge is two and a half. Handle is three and three quarters inch. And then the uh, entire length is about six and a quarter if you go straight across from this tip to that tip. It's kind of a banana shaped knife, so that's how we would have to measure the length. Um, uh, Floki. All right, hang on, buddy. I'm letting you out. Swear to God. Swear to God, that boy. All right, let's pull out some other knives for a comparison. Civivi Cubit. And Civivi, or sorry, CJRB Echo. So it's smaller than both of those guys. How about the Launch 10? It is bigger than that boy. How about some spider codes? The Delica Warney. And we'll do the PM2 Warney. There you go. It's a small one. Let's put out um, a very small knife. The beautiful McBee. And why not we bust out the fat PP as well. So there you go. We had to make him feel large, uh, at least for a little bit. So let us take a measurement behind the edge. This has a real nice uh, thin measurement behind the edge. In fact, I already know what it was. It's uh, 13 thousandths, uh, right behind the edge. Uh, same thickness as the full size. Uh, maybe slight, this one might have been like 14 thousandths, but they're right around 13, 14 thousandths behind the edge, both of them. Um, really, really nice and slicey. Uh, and then the blade stock thickness, I believe, is 0 0.09. But let's double check. Yep, 0 0.09. That's great. The TRM Shadow, a, a very, you know, a knife known for its thin blade stock and sliciness, is 0 0.08. So um, 0 0.09, 0 0.08. This is slicey. Very slicey. Now, you know, as far as cutting performance, um, there is a little bit of a difference between the two here just because of the blade length. Um, if you're cutting through like wide, you know, two inch straps, um, full size is going to be better because you have more cutting edge. Or, you know, cardboard is easier to cut with the full size, but you can absolutely do it with this one. Um, but they are both extremely good cutters, very good slicers. And as far as utility cutting, oh boy. Uh, this did so good in the testing. Um, if you don't know, this kind of blade shape, handle shape, you know, this whole kind of knife pattern is called a shillin cutter, which is traditionally um, a fixed blade kind of pattern. But Vosteed has um, made a folding knife of that uh, kind of uh, 
design. And this is the result, kind of a banana shaped looking knife with a broad blade that has a tip that is pointing downward. Now, I know I always talk about this, but in case you're new, I'm gonna mention it just again, one more time. Uh, the advantages to having this type of blade is that, um, number one, when you're slicing through material, say we have a piece of cardboard like this, and you're slicing through, um, it kind of, it keeps the material trapped right in here where you want it. It keeps it, because this angle is, is back this way, it, it's pulling that material in this way where you want it, not pushing it this way where you're gonna slip out of your cut. Um, and knives with uh, a lot of belly, uh, let's see, this isn't a lot of belly, but it's some belly. Um, you know, you're slicing along, if you kind of get to this point, um, you have belly swooping up this way, you're gonna kind of, you're just gonna kind of, you're gonna accidentally slip out of your cut. Um, but since it's, it's the whole edge is kind of tilted down like this, it almost creates like a, it's almost like a pair of scissors, how it traps the material right, right back in here. Um, so it's just, it just works really good. Um, now for utility cutting, you know, it's a really low tip. So again, on knives with a lot of belly, let's say this is a flat surface. Um, say we want to, we want to get to the tip for utility cutting. You have to raise your wrist all the way up here to get to it. Um, with this, look at that. You're already at the tip way down here. Um, so it's just really easy to do utility cutting and it's a fine tip, you know, it's the thin measurement, uh, right up here and man, does it do good utility cutting. Super, super good. It also feels kind of weird cause you're not used to having the blade pointed like that. So when you first, um, you know, when you're your first couple times cutting with it, it's going to feel weird. Not in a bad, not in a bad way, but just, you're not used to it, a knife kind of pointing down like that. So, uh, if you haven't tried one, just take my word for it. It really cuts well. This is a very purposeful blade shape and handle shape uh, relationship. And it's for a purpose, it's for, it's for cutting. These, uh, you know, this, this, this knife is not shaped like this for aesthetic value. It's shaped like this to be a good cutter, which I really like. You know, I, I have plenty of knives um, that aren't good cutters, but just look good. I love knives like that too. Uh, but I also like knives that, you know, they take uh, cutting performance, um, you know, in priority over aesthetics. So that's that's kind of where we're at with these babies. Um, so let me pick, put that one away for a minute. Um, and let's talk about the construction here. We got uh, G10 handle skills, black G10. There's two versions of this right now. Both have the same scales, but the other one has just plain gray thumb stud and backspacer. This one here has the red. Uh, which I like. This is aluminum, thumb studs and backspacer. Um, we have a, uh, a steel uh, deep carry pocket clip. Not inset, but we got flat headed screws. I haven't noticed a problem in and out of the pocket. Uh, but the full size one does have um, an inset clip. And I actually like this clip better. This is a very low profile clip that works great. Um, this one's a little bit higher profile. Still works very good, but um, I like the clip on the full size one a little better. Um, the blade steel we're looking at is a 14C28N. Um, the full size is 154CM. The uh, we have a nice stone washing on the blade. Um, kind of a not a not a super reflective stone wash, uh, but it looks nice. Looks really nice. Um, and this is a crossbar lock. So um, you know the previous night shades were all liner locks. Now they decided to do a crossbar lock on this mini which I have eh, mixed feelings about. I kind of wish they would have just stuck with it being a liner lock, uh, but we'll get more into that later on. Um, all black hardware. We have kind of an interesting pivot. Uh, it's just a small version of the one on the full size, same kind of milled looking pivot, just something kind of other than just a, a plain, you know, button or whatever, button headed piece of hardware. Uh, you don't get the collar though, like you do on the full size. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the construction. Um, we have uh, cartridge liners, I guess you'd call them. They don't go the full way of the scale. They stop right about right here. So the rest of this knife back here is all just G10 with inserts, threaded inserts for the hardware. 
Um, that really cuts down on the weight. This is a really light knife, especially compared... I mean, the, the full-size one isn't heavy, but, you know, it's got full liners. This one's very, very light. Super, super light. Uh, I forget exactly how light. I think it's less than two ounces, though. Um, I could be completely wrong. That's just, for some reason, what popped into my head, and I, and I think it's right. <laughs> but I'll link it down below. You can go look for sure. Just It's, it's light. Um, but I don't get any flex down here at all. I'm squeezing maybe slightly, but yeah, not having a full liners doesn't feel like a rigidity issue. Um, just, you know, weight relief. We have a crowned spine, just like the full size one, which is really nice. I love that. And it's great because I'm, I'm really using this knife like this mostly pinch grip, uh, index finger on the spine. So it just creates a nice, a nice comfy spot for my pointer finger to rest on right up here. It's kind of on that little hump. It just feels good. It feels really good. Um, lanyard hole. I got that for you guys if you want it. Uh, what else? Knife's on bearings. Um, let's talk about the ergos. It's fine. Um, I didn't notice any major hot spots when I was pushing through material um, on the straps or the, the cardboard or whatever. Um, if you have much bigger hands than I do, um, it is going to become like a four finger knife probably. Like if you have large to extra large hands, um, your pink, your uh, pinky is probably going to be sliding off a little bit. Um, that's okay. The, you know, like I said, I mostly hold the knife in a pinch grip, so that's fine. I don't need to get a full grip on it, even though I can. Um, but yeah, I don't notice any hot spots. You know, the kind of the banana ish handle kind of forms into your hand pretty well um yeah it, it feels totally fine um sharpening trail and plunge grind is pretty good uh, we do have a pretty pretty good life a uh, sharpening life there see the edge termination right here and then where the plunge grind begins and starts to thicken up is right there um, so you have all this room right in here for sharpening away nothing is getting in the way of your stone that's great. I love, love, love to see a good sharpening toil. And I believe, yeah, I think it's it's actually better than the one they did here. For some reason, this one, I mean, well, it's not horrible. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, you just have a little, it's a little bit more roomy here. But still, the edge termination is right in front of, you know, or not, not right in front of, but it is a, a little bit in front of the plunge grind. So that's fine. But this is just cut back a little bit more. So you have a little bit more room. Um, let's see, action. So what I was saying about the crossbar lock, um, I wish it was a liner lock, kind of. I don't, I'm not like, it's not a huge issue. I just kind of wish they would have went with a liner lock for a few reasons. I feel like the knife's a little bit small to have a crossbar lock because when you're using a crossbar lock, you're pulling down on these two tabs, you need to brace up against something. What happens is, since the knife's so short, it kind of, you brace against your palm right here. So you kind of have to do this to, um, to swing it shut. Whereas on other crossbar lock knives, let me grab one. I've got the shadow right here. Um, you know, the knife's bigger, so it kind of just, it sits right in here. It feels more natural to close it, you know, since it's a, it's a bigger handle. This one, it's a little knife. You kind of have to, like, do that kind of thing. Um, another thing is these tabs on either side are a little bit small and close to the scale. I kind of feel like they're a little hard to grip onto. I wish they were sticking out a little bit farther or larger, probably just sticking out a little bit farther. Um, they just feel like they're kind of hard to get a hold of. I mean, I can do it no problem, but I kind of have to, I feel like I'm having to squeeze a little bit harder than I should to ensure that I don't slip off. Whereas if they were poking out a little bit more, I wouldn't have to squeeze as much. I could just put my fingers on and pull back um, without worrying about slipping off. Um, that being said, you know, you pull down the crossbar lock and the blade is very nice and free swinging. Um, you know, it's, it's absolute fall shut action, you know, when you pull those back. So that's great. The, the detent, you know, isn't awesome, but that's the case with all crossbar locks. Um, I can definitely fail it, the thumb stud, but thumb studs are relatively easy to fail. Um, 
but give it just a little, just not even that much effort, and it's going to pop out just fine. Reverse flick, pretty doable. Um, it's a small knife. Sometimes when I go to reverse flick it, it kind of gets caught on this finger up here. Um, but you can absolutely do it. Yeah, it's just a little awkward because it's so small. But the thumb, the uh, thumb stones work great. You can really hammer this thing out with a lot of force. So um, you know, I I, w I had a uh, low expectations for the detent feeling on this knife, but it actually kind of surprised me at at being not bad at all. Um, so that's the action. Um, anything else? That's kind of it. Overall, I think. You know, the full size is, is, since it's the same measurement as behind the edge, same design, same downward facing blade and tip, um, the full size is going to do everything a little bit better than the mini, just because we have more edge to work with. And that's the only reason, just the, the length of the edge. And the larger handle, you know, you can, you can get a better purchase on it for pushing through cuts. Um, so if you want like a full size... You know, if you're going to be really pushing through materials and, and really putting this thing to work, I would go full size. If you want a very lightweight, um, you know, either a backup knife, fifth pocket carry, or just a lightweight, smaller knife that's really good at utility cutting, this is a great choice. You got, you know, easy one-handed use with the crossbar lock. Um, it's a strong lock, too. Um, you know, comfortable pinch grip, great sharpening choil. Very lightweight, deep carry clip, you know, red accents. Uh, then go with the mini, you know? So it's just kind of what you plan on using it for. Um, I would, I mean, I have both, you know? Uh, I, I've been enjoying carrying this little guy. It's a, I do carry it as a backup uh, with a, a larger knife as well. Um, I probably wouldn't carry these as a pair just because it would be a little redundant, even though it'd be kind of cool. It'd be redundant, you know? If I'm carrying the full size, I don't need the mini, and vice versa. Um, so, you know, there you go. I like the detent feeling on the larger better. You know, obviously, it's a liner lock, so we have an actual crisp, nice detent. The reverse flick on this thing is great. It's almost, it's like on the verge. No, it's not too strong, but it is so strong that sometimes I do, if my finger's not all the way... In the hole, I'll even slip out a little bit like you just saw. But man, really nice reverse flicker. Um, so there you go. Um, I think it's worth uh, picking up for 65 bucks if you have a good use for it or if you just want to check it out. Um, if you don't have an original and you want a smaller knife with this blade, this is a, a pretty sweet option. i really, really been liking it. So there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like the video before you bounce today. And I will see you soon. I'll see you in the next video. All right. Later. Peace out and adios.